Well, it's a pretty exciting time for the Brisbane Roar because the return of one of our favourites. He's led the club uh, during two grand finals, been part of all three here at Suncorp Stadium, where we are today. And I'm very pleased to welcome back to the Brisbane Roar, the one, the only, Matt Smith. <laughs> Smithy, welcome back, mate. Oh, thanks, see. Quite a quite an quite a introduction that one, mate. Well, Thank you know, you, you're part of the fabric that uh, the Brisbane Roar has had over the years, part of the family. And uh, it, did you feel that, like, even though you've been away for eight years, did you, did you still feel like you were still part of the Brisbane Royal family? Right. My family was young at that point, and um, we spent five seasons here. And I just remember walking in, even even down to the point where you come into the stadium. The security guys know who you are. You kind of get out of your car, you walk in. There's all the groundsmen, ground staff. It was. It, it, it felt there was a warmth within within this place. Um, I have sincere, fond memories of that. Um, whether or not it would be, you know, training out at Ballymore and going into the offices in there and seeing all the staff, or out on the side of the pitch watching, you know, different stakeholders come and watch training. There was a, a very family feel, and I think that you know, I guess we're testament to that. Like we obviously didn't know each other before the Roar, and yeah, and kept in contact over um, over a vast period of time. So um, memories have been unbelievable at that point, and um, very very fond, and not only for myself but for my family too. See, I, I always remember, particularly the, the home games we used to do here at Suncorp Stadium back in those days, where we used to have the uh, post-match function and we all get together and we'd have a meal. And that's how we all met the families, the, the partners, the kids, the mums and dads of the players. And we, you know, I know myself, I'm still keeping contact with quite a number of those guys, as you would as well. It was it was quite amazing that um, obviously we were very fortunate during that, that era to be, to be quite successful. And... Um, you know the players would, would you know following the game would go and do the the lap of the of the, of the stadium and do your, your photographs and autographs and Kenny Stebb used to be like come on in you go but <laughs> straight into your ice baths and do 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 your recoveries and everything and then um, pretty much straight upstairs into the lift and there used to be the, the members lounge and you used to walk through the members lounge to get to the to continue to the the food where all the other players wives and families were and that room is always packed. The room is always packed, and the players, you know, spend a lot of time talking to members and fans, and um, which was unreal, really. And then, um, but you're right. Then we'd all sit down together and talk about the game and talk about X, Y, and Z. And the kids would be running around everywhere. Yeah, have a card that often grab mine. But um, but yeah, there were fond memories of, of what the club was, and, and um, I think that if you used to speak to any any player or wife or girlfriend or parent at any of that point. Um, they would also say the same thing. Now, since that time, obviously, uh, it was 2014 that you left the club and then you went over to Asia. You were playing in Thailand for a number of years. Your family expanded as well. And, and you know, coming back here today to Suncorp Stadium, um, did, you, did you find that, you know, there's still some of the same faces that we knew from uh, from back in that time? Uh, they, everyone recognised you and welcomed you back to Suncorp Stadium. Yeah, it's great to see Bossy, obviously. Yeah. Um, yourself and Bossy used to do a fantastic job down on pitch side and all the fan engagement of the days. And I know that you've um, you've still been heavily involved over the years, Hingsy. So it's um, it's uh, I left in 2000, 2014 to, to spend some time in Asia and um, came back just over over three years ago and learned an awful lot. Um, you know, football football in Asia is very very different to football here in Australia. Um, different governance, different structures, different ownership models. Um, Different, um, different league structures as well. So, um, you know, I was knocking on the door, and I was 36, almost 37 when 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 I stopped playing at that level, and um, have been back in now since. So, again, to walk through and, and see Mal out there do, do, get, get, getting on the grass, and um, yeah, some very pleasant to see some good faces here. What was it like for you today, driving into Suncorp Stadium? It, it, it was it bringing back, you know, great memories for you. We're sitting here now, Hengsi, in, yeah. in my opinion, probably the best stadium in, in this country. Um, I was very fortunate to to play. You know, the grand finals were great, um, and don't get me wrong, the, 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 it still gives me shivers now, kind of talking about the experiences playing in front of you know a packed Suncorp Stadium. But the journey of of that period, I remember, you know, one of the first games here, there would be six, seven, eight thousand, and then it slowly grew, you know, and over the over the course of you know the first season the second season when you have anywhere from 15 to 25 here and I just, the, the the atmosphere was electric you know um, you can argue that, that it wasn't full at that point but still the energy that you felt from the crowd and the stadium and so to, to, to drive back in here today and I was here for the Matildas game at the weekend as well sitting here now um, brings back um, yeah, some, some, some very good experiences, I, I, very I, good memories. I, I still remember the first time I walked through that tunnel 
and you walk out into the field, you look up and go, holy crap, it's just such a intimidating thing. Like, you know, if you as a player week in, week out doing that, having the crowd there cheering for you guys, you know, and, and then seeing that, uh, you know, continue with the current teams, you know, obviously we're coming back to Suncorp uh, in the next season, and some of those young boys have never experienced what it's like to walk out for the first time onto Suncorp Stadium, and, and you know. My journey is a little bit different to most. Yeah. Right? So I came into, I've been to pro football late, so to, 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 to respectfully to go from a semi-professional arena and um, coming and signing for, Bris for Brisbane Roar and I remember we had a, a pre a pre game um, training session here as 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 we used to do and um, getting trainees downstairs walking out to an empty stadium as a non-professional player that's just coming to a professional game and just walking the pitch with my boots on in the in the playing car I was like you know the 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 excitement the, the nervousness. Um, the anticipation just just to go then I think it was Sydney SC I think we played the next day and that was the one that Manny McCarr scored his right foot <laughs> after we and that was the, I think that was the start of the 36 games unbeaten so um, for 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 Brisbane players for for players representing the Raw to, to come and play here and it's so exciting to to to, to, to hear and see and read that um, there will be some games here next season um, to come back to Brisbane's a, a um, something that I know that the Cubs very much looking forward to trying to achieve and we're, we're very much hoping to, to be able to do that in the in the near future. Now you did touch on the 36 games unbeaten here at some well you know throughout that season here at Suncorp and away obviously. Uh, Ange Postacoglu obviously our coach at that time just broken it with Celtic. It's, yeah. it's, it, it's kind of funny that it's you know same coach similar sort of you know. I, I had a, a podcast with uh, I think it's called the Celtic Way or um, one of, one of, the, one of the, the podcasts over there and um, I made a valid point though that I hope that it doesn't occur to Celtic like it occurred to us because the next five we lost. Yeah, that's, that's right. You got there. Oh crap! But that was that was a very windy day down in Sydney. We lost we lost two 0 I think one went straight in from the corner, and then I think um, Dimitri Petridos I think scored yeah. um, scored after two, two or three minutes, and that was um, it, that was a crazy time because we, we, we never really realised how many games unbeaten we got until probably 34, 35, and then obviously everyone got kind of wind of it, and then it was. It kind of erupted, but um, it's 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 so fantastic to see Ange doing so well at Celtic. Um, got a big game tomorrow against um, Real Madrid as well. Now, you have been through you know some great times at the club. You've been through some you know tough times where we were re rebuilding and all that sort of stuff. You're coming back to the club now as a general manager. One of the three uh, general managers that the club will have is in, uh, Ante Kovacevic. Uh, there's Riz Galea as well. Um, you know, your role within the club, obviously you've been part of the club in a leadership position. What will you bring with uh, that and also what you've learnt overseas and also at your time at Brisbane City and Gold Coast Knights as well? Yeah, my role as um, one of the GMs is a very broad role. I think that it's, it's a role that um, I can help support Chris and the other GMs in to be honest, trying to, try, trying to rebuild the club. There's a big restructure going on, which is really exciting. Uh, when Chris contacted us a couple of weeks ago and told us of his plans to you know, regain Brisbane's identity, to reconnect with the local community, to be able to help build and, 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 and create an environment and internal culture that was kind of once there. Um, and I know that the club has had some challenging times over recent years, and I'm very excited to be part of trying to rebuild that. And, I guess my experiences across from 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 pre-playing, um, obviously from a, um, a degree and a master's point of view, um, prior turning professional, and then having the, the very fortunate um, role that I did here at Brisbane, and, and then also overseas, um, in dealing with um, overseas owners and different corporations and different entities, um, to now, obviously most recently, uh, fortunately being involved in Brisbane City, where um, I joined the club in. The, 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 different scale but a similar position in trying to rebuild an organisation and um, I was very very fortunate to, to spend the last three years there from being a director of football to being a technical director of the NPL and, and also head coach so I think that that's, that's given me a, a fantastic platform to now come and change myself at um, uh, um, an arena such as Brisbane Raw which I'm very much looking forward to so again um, my experiences on the pitch in leading, my experience is vastly different um, off the pitch. So I'll, I'll try and create something special again. And I guess that's the overarching aim. And, and um, Chris and the Bakri family are very, very motivated and keen to um, um, regenerate a lot of the, the past history. There's some, there's some good people involved with the club, some, some fantastic people still involved with the club. And hopefully I'll be um, a key part of that. 
It, it's funny because obviously coming back to the club and you know and there's uh, a lot of new people and obviously um, your experience a lot of people don't realize that pre uh, football uh, you, you come from a marketing background you've done you know a, a masters in sports management and you know you, you've got that experience as an administrator as well as a player and coach yeah my journey to football is very different to most um, I have a degree in marketing management I have a master's degree in sport sp sports management um, recently submitted my, my final assessment for my A license. I've been a football coach for the last three years. I've, I've been a player. Um, obviously, part of my role is also to help help the younger generation of players in a technical advisor role, um, especially in the, the the senior MPL space, to help the young emerging talent transition into um, the Brisbane role one day. So, I still have the element of the grass. I still have the element of um, business and experience, and I guess being on the pitch as well. So, it's a it's a broad role that looks after and and help support different facets of the club because um, you know I still I'm still a player I'm still like to I still like the smell <laughs> of your ass right so um, I'm very much looking forward to helping helping the club build um, off the pitch um, importantly but also help the players on the pitch um, develop into future stars. It, it, does that mean we're going to see you at training and having a bit of a kick sometimes? Yeah, <laughs> I've only just retired, actually. <laughs> and retired, in inverted commas. I played for over, 30, over 35s the other day, and that was, um, that was uh, they, they, they've got some footage of me actually falling over, so I hope that <laughs> Oh, good, we'll keep that for game day. Yeah, welcome, Matt Smith, there we go. <laughs> Look, you know, it, it is great to have you back here at the club because, you know, we have so many uh, alumni of the Brisbane Raw who work within the club. We've got, obviously, Shane Stefanuto, who's in the football director role, yourself coming back to the club. Chris Grossman and, and Mooney, of course, who uh, was part of season one and two back in 2005, 2006 uh, of uh, the Brisbane Raw family. And, you know, the ethos of the club really is understood by you guys. And, and I guess you can help bring the, the people that are newer to the club uh, into what the Brisbane Raw is all about. I think it's trying to find a, a good mix and a good balance of both. I think there's, there's some amazing football people there. Obviously, the memories that I've had very, very closely with Shane over the years. You know, from we used to be so competitive on the pitch. Um, you know, we, we went through that whole five-year journey together of, of the huge success. To and I, I obviously know Warren from when we played at the Brisbane Strikers back in 08 and 09. Um, obviously, I played, the, I played with Chris Crossman at North Queensland Fury. So, you know, there's there's some players there with that I've, I've personally had different relationships with at, at different clubs. So, they're they're football people. They're, more importantly, they're good people. They're sincere about trying to and bring good things to the club. Um, but then you also need the mix of, of corporate people as well. So I know that, you know, Chris, there's, there's Ante coming in with another football person. Uh, Risk is doing a fantastic job within operations. So um, to have a, a good balance of, of football experience people that's, that's you know, working on different facets of the club, I think is a real positive for um, Brisbane. And you'll be doing a bit of work with the NPL while, you know, in your role as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to looking um, looking at the the MPL team as a technical advisor with with Rossi. I know Owen does a, a great work in the younger age group as well. Um, you're also at Graham Fife in the in the 18. So um, I'm I'm looking forward to you know being an um, advisor, being being a mentor, being out on the pitch to help um, the players. You know, because it's very people underestimate how difficult it is to be able to transition into a senior professional player. Mm. And obviously, you know, experiencing at Brisbane City the last three years, helping players understand what's actually needed, not only to, to be able to be given an opportunity, but to be able to break in and keep an opportunity and then go as high as what you can go. I think that, you know, myself, Mooney, Grossi, um, Shana, we've got some unbelievable experiences that, that, that we can share. And, um, and look, I'm, I'm a football player. I'm, a <laughs> I'm moving into a role which um, to, to help try and build off the pitch. But... Um, wherever I can and whatever, whatever possible, wherever needed, um, I'm, um, I'm part of a, a group of people that can, can with a, a wealth of knowledge. Well, it, it's interesting because all of those people who uh, you know were players with the Raw, who now have come back in management positions within the club, it, everyone's gone away and they've done it grassroots and then they've worked their way up like you know Mooney I think coached an under eights team and then you know he's moved up and now he's coaching the Raw after you know doing the uh, what was it the youth the youth team and 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 all that it, you know the uh, the youth program when he was heading up that and you know Grossi is in there with the MPL and, and Shano you know when he left he, he came in as a, a media manager and things like that so you know it, it's quite interesting that you know all of you guys have gone and learnt your craft to come back to the club so you can go okay we've learnt this we've 
you know, been able to, uh, you know, put this into experience and now bring that back to the club? Yeah, I think that um, I was just talking recently. Um, I was asked a question: What's it like transitioning from a, a, um, a football player into the next chapter of your life? And it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult to do something. I mean, I was lucky enough to do it for ten years or love, but you know, players like Shane that's had a very, very good, very good career, and players that come out of the professional arena, you have to kind of reinvent yourself. So I was very, very fortunate that um, that I was able that I was. That I've been given the opportunity at um, Gold Coast Knights and then and then also Brisbane City um, because you do learn your craft. I learned an awful lot at Brisbane City having to manage stakeholders, um, volunteers, to coaches, to try to build an environment, build teams, build players. Um, obviously, head coach of the first team as well. So that's been a huge learning learning for me over the last three years from you know, the, the first year and the injuries and COVID and the relegation to then the FQPL and kind of promotion and then stabilising this year. So. To, to build teams, I think that's probably the, the key thing that I learned at Brisbane City. I was very fortunate that I was able to bring in some, some, some key people around me that were able to do things that, that I certainly couldn't do, that could help support in the areas because, you know, especially in the NPL landscape, there's there's limited resources as such. Um, so you're, you're, you're leaning on people in, in, in different skill sets. So to build a team at Brisbane City, um, to, to now you know, be a competitive and a respectable club within within Queensland, um, yeah, I was very fortunate and it, I learned an awful lot. So to be able to now, and it comes back to when I first joined Brisbane City, you know, I was I barely played 10 games for North Queensland Fury, just coming into the A-League and then um, Ange gave me an opportunity, Brisbane Royal gave me an opportunity. I think that's probably etching towards where you're going to see with it is that you know, there's Brisbane Raw does give opportunity to past players to to be be involved in the game, and um, you know, Rossi, Mooney, Shadow, and myself now we're very privileged and, 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 and very um, grateful for for this chance. What sort of GM are you going to be? <laughs> because you know I, I remember obviously your days as a captain. You, you've always been tough but fair. Uh, you know, you, you, you uh, place people around you that can do things that you can't because, you know, that's what a leader does. But what can we expect from you here at the club? Just someone just to be human, I think. Um, I think for, for, for many people that know me, I'm a fairly humble guy that yeah. likes, to, likes to work hard. I like to try and do the right thing. I like to try and build relationships. I like to form cultures and environments. I think that's one thing that um, in any successful team on the pitch, and especially team off the pitch, there's lots of things on the field that can be translated into off the business as well. So I think try and um, create an environment for, for the, the internal staff to, number one, enjoy what they do. Number two, have a vision and, and a plan as to where we want to go. Um, but also be very um, fair in terms of hitting, hitting, where, hitting our mark. Um, I think reconnecting with with Brisbane is a is a key objective, certainly of mine. Um, I believe Brisbane had a, a very good relationship with the local community, local clubs, different groups. Um, so I'd like to think that people expect a, a fresh beginning. And and grassroots level football is incredibly important to the rural. Always has been. Uh, again, from I remember Andy Pinch is out within out within yeah. the um, community program. There wasn't a week that went by where I wasn't involved in a. PR activity, whether it be within a local school or a local hospital or going and coaching at a local club or doing an event anywhere within South East Queensland, I think that, um, again, that's how you build relationships. Um, we're sitting here now in an empty Suncorp Stadium. Um, part of my role is to make sure that when we're back here, that this, the, 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 the players walk out to a, a sea of orange. And this place, you know, we both have seen it. We've both stood in the middle while we've had an absolute packed stadium at a grand final, and then it's just the most electric atmosphere, as you said before. But the um, people, people ask me all the time, what was, what was my favourite grand final? And um, it's difficult to pick. Well, there's three. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately. But it's, it's a, it's a, there's amazing histories at this club. You know, and I, I was even looking, looking before when, you know, from... Um, uh, back in 1957, the, the, the history before the Brisbane was remarkable. So to unearth mm. the, the origins of Brisbane, I think is very important, and it's probably one thing that I learned at Brisbane City actually that how they how they um, look at the history and the heritage of, of how the clubs formed. But when um, when Eric Pardew scored that header, uh, we only won the game. But um, that was that was one thing that will distinctly sit sit in the, in the memory for a long time. And the only thing I've ever compared it to is the skydive. The adrenaline, <laughs> unreal. So. But there's, 
but, you know, I'm, I'm very confident that, that, that Warren and, and his team um, you know, can, can have a successful season. Again, I remember when um, when Ange, when, when when we all signed because there was 11 new signings yeah. that, that um, particular season. And, and there was a lot of criticism at that time because it was a young team that had been untested. And then, you know, so Ange co copped a bit of criticism for that, but it, it paid off. Well, <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was signing, and, and um, there's a few other signings, you know, like Eric Pardew coming coming from Scotland, Michael Theo coming from England, Thomas Boyce from Germany at that point. Respectfully, you know, Australian spectators probably didn't know too, too much about that. And um, I think at the time we were the youngest team, like age-wise, within the average age in the A League. But we also, I mean, we played lots of local games, and yeah. we obviously won the local games, but we didn't beat an A League opposition in pre-season, and the media was. It wasn't critical, but it was, it was well, this team's going to have the wooden spoon again, we're not going to go anywhere, and then the first four games of the season, obviously, we didn't win, you know, so the, the media was very... Yeah, yeah. Hard, ...but the club and Ange were very good at protecting that group, and, and then, um, obviously, internally, it was very different. Internally, we, we believed in where we were going, because we had a vision and a plan, mm. and we always stuck to that, and then um, beating Sydney FC 1-0 one, one here, um, and then the rest, the rest is history, but... Uh, again, uh, I think Warren's doing an excellent job. I think he's got a, a good squad to be able to be very competitive this year, and, and um, who knows? See, it's funny because I always remember, and, 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 you know, Eric Pardley telling me, we, you know, we were talking about, you know, that grand final one day, and he said the team was that fine-tuned at the time that he knew that if he turned around, someone would be there, and the ball would either come to him or he'd pass it off, and it just went to the, you know, that, you know, that point which helped us work as a team, as that one unit, to score those goals, to win the games. The, the, the philosophy of, of play was so simple, but so complex at the same time. But the understanding amongst the playing group at that point was exactly that. We relied on each other to be in certain places at, at that moment in time. And it was fine-tuned to the point that if you weren't there, it'd be like, is he, is he injured or something? Yeah. <laughs> So the connection within the team, and also I mean, there, were, there were some really important players that year, because obviously you know there was the starting eleven that was that was consistent, but then there's players like Milan Suzak in that first year. Yeah, absolutely. And when um, when um, Solos and I were, when he came in, when Reynaldo left, mm. Luke De Vier left. So there's players that come come in and, and join into that journey, and then the subsequent years kind of followed. But um, the day in day out training was was hard. It was intense. It was well. Ken Stead had the one of the most rigorous fitness regimes of all time. But it was all with the ball. Yeah, everything. So it, it wasn't running without the ball. But the the connection being that we were so we were so far intertwined with, with how each other played that we knew exactly where we needed to be to try and to try and make an opportunity for ourselves. And I, I remember um, reading articles that oh, well, we know how Brisbane were going to play. We can stop it, but. Yeah, the message was, well, we'd just be better and be better. And, and be better. fitter. You know, you, you often, you know, particularly at that time, the Raw would just outrun the other team because you guys were just so much fitter. I, I, I just think it was raw all the time. Um, you know, we'd get into the attacking half and all we'd hear was shoot from the stands. Like, <laughs> like shoot. And they'd be like, no, pass it back. Out through Eric or out through Bratzy. And I would have a little overlap for, for us. And best art would always be in, 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 in that, on that spot. You know, they, but that was how that was how that was our identity. Mm. You know, and we were very proud proud of that identity. So we tried to protect that for as much as we could. So whenever we were challenged, our way, we know how to play you, or we know how to stop you. We just we had that. It's not a confidence. We had we had that belief internally that we would just that it would just we could rise above that. And um, and uh, again, I'm I'm very confident that Mooney and, and the team this year can. Um, and have some good success. Do you think that that philosophy, obviously, that you learnt, particularly under Ange during that time, you'll be able, you'll bring into the administration side of the club as well? Because the one thing that I remember from that time, I would walk into the club and the first person to come out and say hello was Ange, and it was a one club mentality. There wasn't a playing group and an administration group. It was one club. Absolutely, and it goes back to some comments earlier that the players would often um, come off of the training pitch at Ballymore and go into the offices and just going to have a cup of tea, just going to have a cup of coffee with the members of staff in there because at that point the desks were always open spaced and um, I remember Michelle and, and Dan and, and, yeah. and, 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 and everyone kind of sat around and we'd just, just talk about, or we'd talk about anything and everything. So it is very much 
a family, or it was very much a family. Mm. I'd like to believe that, that we can get to that, we can get back to that point. Um, obviously, you know, the, the, the guys are down in the Gold Coast at the moment. Um, I know that there's um, ideas and, and plans to be able to come back into Brisbane, which which is fantastic. So, um, having that family type feel, having that culture, more importantly. Um, and look, there was a culture of we didn't necessarily need to be best friends. It was the culture that we liked everybody. Everybody got on. Mutual mutual respect. Everybody respected the roles that they played. Like the players, Sin City respected the roles of Michelle at the time in, in media, or they respected Dan in community and, and things like that. So it's um I hope that I hope that if if uh, I hope to bring that back into back into my world. I, I think you know from my perspective that that was when I felt part of the club. Because, you know, I, I was, and you know, even though I've been here from the start, it was, you know, that was the moment when it was literally, Ange walked in and, and was like, no, no, we're all together. And, and, you know, we only are successful because we all work together. And that includes fans, that includes our, you know, stakeholders, our sponsors, our, all the relationships that we build, the grassroots level as, as well as all that sort of stuff. It, you know, it's, it, I think all of that's important. Yeah, again, there wasn't a week that went by where we did, where we weren't doing some sort of engagement. Yeah, um, it was with the rap program out with the big inflatable field, kicking kicking a ball with six, seven, eight year olds in, in a in a in a school somewhere, or it would be at a, at a hospital visit, or I would I would, I would often go and, and and go and coach at Albany Creek or some other clubs around mm. around Brisbane. I was involved in the very first SAP program out of out of women's out of uh, winning wars at the time, and. Um, so but we also knew the importance of that. I mean, I guess for, for myself personally, coming from a, a sphere of not being a professional footballer my whole life and going through a marketing degree and, and a sport master's um, management master's degree, I kind of knew the importance of connection. I knew the importance of building relationships um, because ultimately, it's you know we are competing with people's leisure time. We are competing with um, you know, a society at the moment which has had a hard couple of years. So. Um, even being here at the weekend and seeing 25,000 people watching the Matildas game. It's great. It's a great, really. it's, it's a phenomenal um, atmosphere, it's a phenomenal experience and I've experienced some, some great times here so I'd highly encourage um, when we are back at Soccer Stadium that the fans come out um, at the Morton Bay Stadium as well um, because the players feel it. It's interesting, obviously, with our current playing group, we've got a number of you know players who uh, have been with the club a couple of years now raw fans like you know you look at Jesse Daly I, I saw him post a photo of I think it was him and his brother here at a home game when they were kids and now they're part of the playing group that looked up to you guys like I, I, you know I, I remember having a chat with uh, I think Jesse and a, a couple of the other guys talking about oh you know and they you know Matty Mackay was there and they're like wow they you get a bit not intimidated but a bit kind of like wow that's Matty Mackay and but they're rising up so you know I, I probably the the key message there is even if you're a kid in the fan, a, a, a kid in the um, stadium, you could be on this field one day playing for the Raw. When um, when Mooney was at was at Churchy, and um, he asked me to come in and take a take a training session, and I, I, I forget the age group, but Jesse was one of the players at that. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So again, it was something that, that that we used to do as players, and I wasn't the only one. Michael Theo used to be out there, and yeah, do little bits in the community from a, just off our own back. You know, it wasn't didn't necessarily need to be. With, 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 Within the raw at that point, but Jesse was one of them, was one of the players there at Churchy. So to see him go overseas and then come back into come back into the Brisbane raw, being uh, a Brisbane born and bred, to see him now um, taking his opportunity within within the first, it, it's a it's a amazing uh, experience for him. So yeah, I, even I was at the game um, at the weekend watching um, Victory and you know, Jackie and yeah. Jackie and, and, and even Acto from Victory. You know some of some of um, the boys coming up there and just, just you know, well, it's good, welcome back. It's, you know, it's, there's a good feel about it. There's a lot of positivity around the club at the moment. Well, Smithy, it's so good to have you back here at the Brisbane Raw. Uh, welcome back on behalf of uh, the Brisbane Raw family. It's, it's great to have you here. Look, I'm very excited to, uh, to be part of Brisbane Raw again. Hingsy, it's been an absolute pleasure, gentlemen as always, and um, looking forward to uh, spending some more time over, over, over the season.